Hey, it's the Fosters After Show on AfterBuzz TV. Tonight, we're talking about season three, the finale called Kingdom Come. And here to help us do that is Hayden Byerly and Tom Williamson. So stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, AfterBuzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Hello, hello, it's the Fosters After Show. We have a big episode to discuss. Before we do so, let's introduce our special guests. Guys, it's Hayden Byerly and Tom Williamson. Woo! Good to see you guys. <laughs> yes. Is this the first time uh, on After Buzz we've had two special guests? Um, well, we for have, the Fosters, I should say. Um, last Maybe. week we had three, but I don't want to... Yeah. I don't want to take that away from you. you know, I still feel special because this is my first time. So I'm not alone. Yeah. I'm really excited about this. You want to make up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's done it! Whoa. Whoa. He bailed out. He bailed out. I didn't move. He bailed out. Y'all are old roommates in the house. Is that what happened? Come on, dude. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, I feel like a child and I have to turn around away. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm like, that's my little brother right there. You better back up. Or little brother, you better back up. It's, it's, you know, guys, it's legal if you don't say anything. Just let Tom and I love each other. Tom, you're in trouble. Yeah. Nope, he's okay. It's all right. Okay. Tom's... While Tom 17, slides 16. the opposite on the couch, we're going to do a quick <laughs> intros for the panel. Let's start with Hannah, since she's joining us back again. I'm back, you guys. I feel like it's been forever. I don't know what to do. I don't know what these headphones are. The new intros scare me. But hey, guys, I'm Hannah Pritchard. I tweet from at the Hotshot Dude. I am going to be paying attention to Twitter tonight. I am not good at it, so tweet directly at me if you can, and I will say your questions, but include the hashtag as well. <laughs> Steph. And I'm Stephanie Georgie. You can follow me on Twitter at Stephanie Georgie. I'm going to attempt to be on live chat roll if I can get this whole Wi Fi working. Otherwise, you can feel free to tweet me as well. I'll be paying attention. Wow, you guys are making us look so good. We're Thank attempting. you so much for that. <laughs> We're attempting a We're lot of things. <laughs> um, I am Jeffrey Masters. I tweet from Jeff Masters1. Jillian is out tonight. She's very sick, unfortunately. When she gets the uh, energy back, though, she said she'd be on Periscope. And of course, you can follow her on Twitter at Jillian Left. Let's get into the episode. It started with the service for Jack on the beach. Right. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> how how when That's... did you learn that Jack was gonna die? Um well <laughs> uh he died nineteen, right? He died in episode nineteen. Last episode, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I found out Jack was gonna die when we were filming nineteen. Are you uh, serious? Yeah, I read the script and it was like, yeah, Jack ends up in Pearson's house and gets beat to death. And I was like, I'm really not happy about it. Oh, wow. really? I'm shocked. I'm really, I'm really not. I was so excited. <laughs> Tell us why you're not happy, Hannah. But she's for okay. selfish reasons, because she wanted him not to be killed off the show, and she wanted his acting career to prosper. Oh, yeah. Because he, I think he's wonderful on the show. Ted like, is amazing. He's, he's so wonderful. He's a great actor. He's great to work with. Um, he, he played Jack very well, especially for people not knowing a lot about him. Yeah. And he's a very nice person offset as well. Yeah. Jack, Jack is... A character that I will miss. Um, Tanner's a great kid, and, and it, it is sad to see him die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically. Whatever. Yeah. When, when it happened, though, I was like, he better have like signed on to do something else, and that's why they're killing him off already. Because I think he's wonderful, and I think he's going to do very, very well. Well, I think it just was another way of showing how messed up the Foster system can be. Like, think about it this way. I was so struck by his yes. funeral, his service that was on the beach, because the people that were there were only the fosters your family and so that meaning if those are the closest people in his life yeah. and they're not even his like family you know there wasn't a grandma there wasn't an aunt who flew in from you know chicago it was it was nobody who knew, unfortunately knew him that well yeah i thought the exact same thing i was like really uh, affected no by one. that yeah no one he was all alone the only friend he ever had was jude and he never had any family or anyone to call his own, and he mm. never had a home or a, a place that he could feel safe. Yeah, it was heartbreaking. It was. I thought it was perfect that they had no one else there because it just it showed, you know, the depth of it. I'm sad. Um, just so everyone knows, I am on and running live. <laughs> uh, shout out from Princess Tor. She says that she loves your Star Wars shirt. Thank you. It's awesome. It's amazing. I, I so 
Um, I assumed it was going to be, you know, cold or, or windy down. I also live at the beach, so it gets chilly at night. And I was going to wear my sweatshirt, but my sweatshirt is also really Star wars out, and I didn't want to seem like that much of a, of a geek. <laughs> yeah, Even a though I bit. am, I didn't want to show that. I didn't want to be that nerdy, so I just... <laughs> <laughs> but really Thank you for it. that thought process. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm just letting you all know, like, why. I'm just filling you all in on my life. And if, so if you're just listening, not watching, we have many listeners who are just listening to audio on the podcast, Hayden is wearing a Star Wars t-shirt. It just says Star Wars on it, by the way. It's nothing really special. It's just a gray and black t-shirt that says Star Wars, but it's still really amazing. Yeah, for the <laughs> listeners also, Tom is wearing just a black t-shirt. Did you want to give our th- your thought process on that as well? Those are the that thoughts. Side. Yeah. <laughs> He's nodding his head now. I get it. I get it. <clears throat> oh, this is for radio people listening on the podcast. Um, yeah, man. I was just... It was there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Cool. Well, that's all the time we have. This was such a fun that was episode. Such a great. Thank you all so uh, much. <laughs> I'm leaving. Okay, so one of my favorite supporting characters has always been my girl Taylor. Okay. I like how just calm and easy she is. She right. seems no drama. Um, what are you guys' thoughts about the... I, I have some very specific thoughts about the qu- new questions concerning Jude's sexuality. Can I, can I say something about Taylor before? Just yeah. Yes. You you liked what you you what, say what you liked her about her being a sport character. I like how chill she is. Right. She's a very right. reasonable She's... character for how young they are. Well, I, I think that we should remember that that the one who encouraged Jude and and everyone to to go out and sneak and start drinking was Taylor. That was yeah. Taylor. Uh, she that was wasn't the one Daria. Kind of provoked the. I'm pretty sure it's the one who provoked the TPing as yeah. well. So I, I love Taylor as well as a character. But, but you feel that she's, she's a bad influence, influence for you? No. Oh my cause, goodness. Because Jude was like, you know, I mean, they were all in the house, and he was kind of pressured into to drinking because. <laughs> She had this whole like manipulative plan to get him and and Hayden. This is my show. Up. Don't call me out. <laughs> <laughs> we need a just, roll tape. Let's go back. Let's rewind. Saying, let's redo this. Um, it was Taylor. Not it was the friend Daria. It was Taylor for the drinking. It was really. She was like, let's all go. Let's all get drunk and make out back at my place. Was that the time when she was still trying to court you? Before you, uh, Jude had come out. Well, that was yeah, where she goes to try and kiss him, and then he's like, um, oh. no. <laughs> And then Jude kissed her. So I mean, Jude's all over the place. Okay. She's she's really confused. I'm so surprised an- she stuck around with his crazy. Mm, so to answer your question, then I I can't back up why I like her so much. <laughs> <laughs> I just like her general energy. I you like know, it I think too. I think she's always been supportive of Jude, and I think that that I, yeah. I agree. I think that she's always kind of been there for him. And even though that was a bad thing of her to do, her intentions were correct. She wanted to help Jude with Connor. I forgot that Connor got shot, guys. I know. So <laughs> much has happened I on this know. show. <laughs> well, at least Shaw agrees with you she thinks taylor is the real mvp i agree with you i think taylor has always had it for jude from the beginning right. so i don't think her intentions have always been the best but i do like that character mm-hmm. right i like the energy she brings to scenes with you all right. i don't know what it is i think that it's really admirable that the fosters is going in this direction where jude has come out and said i don't know that i'm only into guys just because on TV, so often, so black and white. Yeah. I am gay. I am straight. Mm-hmm. I am transgender. I am bisexual. And yet, when you're this young, you don't have all the answers. You can't firmly commit yet, just because you're still in this figuring out process. Yeah. yeah. And so I think it's really cool that we're able to explore that side of it. Absolutely. And it's just it's so heartbreaking, too, that we might be exploring this just because he thinks he's being punished for well, dating guys or see, seeing a guy. That's oh the one gosh, part that I, I hated. Really? I feel like I was bummed that I, for a second I thought that the the whole bringing up God was going to be a good thing when he said that, you know, God gave us free will. Yeah. <laughs> she like slapped me and she was like, Hannah, don't think it's bad. It's not bad because, you know, I, I'm a religious person. I wanted to think that good he has because you can hold on to faith to be able to move on in something like this. Okay. But then it was different because he said, I think that he's punishing me because he's taking everyone away from me. So then they kind of turned it into something negative, which I feel like was unnecessary. But See, I actually thought they did the opposite. When they first first brought it up, I thought no, they were going to... it was positive, and then it kind of turned negative, no? See, I thought the opposite. I thought when they first brought it up, I was like, this is negative, because people always relate, you know, that black and white with a belief, or whatnot. And then when they turned it around, and Callie was like, well, listen, I don't think that's why Jack was taken, and I want you to know that, like, Jack didn't have these feelings. I was like, thank you, actually, for turning that around, because then mm. it doesn't make it this... 
black or white thing. Yeah, and I yeah. like that she told him. I like that honesty from Callie. Oh my gosh, but would you, I kept thinking yeah. when that was happening, would you have done that? Would you have, you yeah, know what I mean? Because would it's you like your little brother is tripping about his friend who just died. Right. It's one of those things where you can't let that haunt someone. Like, yeah. if you know the truth, then say it because they're never going to hear it from this person who already oh, passed. God. Yeah, and at the end of the day, I actually don't, be- I, I think we have every reason to believe that Jude is gay. Mm-hmm. I just think that this questioning coming out of losing two friends that he the Connor and now Jack so mm-hmm. I guess not friends I think that coming out of that like is it would make you question it at that age and sure. even yeah. not necessarily just losing two friends but having someone lose their life right. having someone die yeah. having someone you know leave you and go on and, and move on to whatever that would be after you pass I mean you start to question everything especially as a kid you're already really confused and then yeah. on top of that you're questioning okay well he's dead but where is he where is he gone and then you look at all of these different answers and you're like oh okay so he's gone to this this magical place that is so amazing and incredible for him and he's finally happy but this says that if i'm gay i'm not gonna go there yeah and you start to feel scared you want to you know you want to be happy when you move on you know life you know after life or you know death after you want to be in a good place you want to be in a place that brings you joy and happiness and you don't want to be you know punished for who you are Mm -hmm. and he's scared and i think that you know it's it's the fact that religion can bring such security and stability to someone and can make them so happy and hopeful but jude is i think he's kind of reading it the wrong way is it's saying don't be yourself yeah which is I don't think I don't think it's the message. A lot of yeah. the people viewing right now agree with what you're saying, and then um, Andrew Arias says that Jude needs to explore, but I hope he doesn't ruin his relationship with Taylor. And then one person, uh, Slux33, said, "Why did he tell Callie that she lies a lot? She doesn't." So some people think that's different. <laughs> and then one person actually just said that they thought he, they were only into one gender, but now they're really questioning it as well. Yeah. Personally, yeah, and it it happens. You know, sometimes you're like, okay. Maybe when I look at a you know a male and I'm thinking that they're attractive, I'm thinking more than you know just looking at them and and thinking of them as a friend. You yeah. know, people question themselves and and what they think. And also, um, the question the question about what was it before the the last one ruining the relationship with Taylor. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. I yeah. I think that I think that that's very true. Is that no matter what, whether Jude you know decides to like date Taylor or not, I think that he should keep her as a friend. Yeah, she's been there. That's before. good because yeah. Kobe Taylor said, "If Jude hurts Tay Tay, we about to fight." Taylor's <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Dang, Kobe Taylor. Tay-tay. I think that Jude is such a sweet character, and I think that he developed that charisma because it would eventually help him to be adopted, and it did. It worked. You know, he was adopted by an amazing family, and I think now that he's getting comfortable in the family, we're starting to see like the angry side of him come out more. So when he told Callie he's a liar, and when he like lashes out, and he's now angry about Connor. I think that while he eventually will need to learn to control that emotion, it's good that he's letting that out. Because yeah. I think for so long he kept it all in. He's mm-hmm. feeling something for once. So yeah. many people are actually tweeting and asking why Jude doesn't believe Callie and why he thinks that Callie is a liar. I don't know if you have anything to say. You know, <clears throat> it's actually kind of interesting because I, I, I myself am confused by that as well. Really? <laughs> when, when he said, you lie about a lot of things, Callie, I was like, Okay, maybe it's because I've just been on hiatus and haven't been doing anything <laughs> and my brain is not with me. But I am trying, like, I was racking my brain trying to find a moment in which, you know, I can remember about, you know, that he would he, that he would remember, that he right. would stay with and have this anger towards. And I, I can't necessarily point a particular thing. It could be back to, you know, her and Brandon and getting adopted and, and yeah. all of that in the beginning. It could be something that we haven't seen when they were both, you know, in the foster system. But there's definitely something that would instigate him yeah. to say that. He's he there's something that he knows or that he's figured out that she's not telling him. Right. It could just be that she wants or he wants her to be lying. Yeah, you know, and, and you know it's, yeah, I think he was happy about just one other person liking him. That kind of made him feel like, oh, this I can do this. I can move on away from Connor. And then he died, so it's like, that sucks. And then Callie's like, well, actually, he didn't like you. And he's like, what? Yeah, he did. I'm trying to think back to all of Callie's scenes with AJ. I don't remember him or her ever lying to you. Do you? Um, not outright, no. I don't, I can't think of anything. I mean, you know, a misleading statement and a lie. (laughs) I feel like she's very good at misleading. 
Yes. And and making statements and comments that are not directly the truth. They're not necessarily a flat out lie. She's honest in the moment, but that's it. She's like purposefully trying to kind of avoid She's the question. Manipulating the situation yeah. right. to her advantage. Yeah. To in order to, to often like save friends though. Yes. Like Daphne. She's very protective of her. I think that she is incredibly loyal and often to a fault. Mm -hmm. Yes. She thinks it's her responsibility to save everybody. Yeah. Right. And then she that kind of does. actually keeps the truth from them because she's trying to protect them all. Yeah, and I don't think it's like a, a, like an outright lie to like for a lie's sake. It's like to protect, like yeah. you said. Yeah. It, her scene with Justina Mm. Like uh, we haven't liked Justina for a while. We have got good I reason last it. week. That Bob man, I'll always go back to you talking about that Bob. Oh yeah, people with Bob haircuts. Yo, do you guys know the secret? <laughs> no, what is it? Okay, uh, cool. Lean in. Um, <laughs> if a character is female and she's stereotypically a the B word. Mm -hmm. All rhymes with the biatch. It actually doesn't rhyme with that at all. Um, <laughs> she nice. will be on TV or a movie. She will have a bob. Huh. Yes. And if she has a bob, then you can assume that this person is a brat <laughs> and untrustworthy. I need a line chart. I need okay. some graphs. Jurassic Park. Some, Jurassic like, Park. Okay. Red bob. Right. <laughs> Do need I say any more? Need I say more? <laughs> I case closed. Yeah, there's yeah. a new movie coming out. With Julia Roberts on the poster. She has a bob. No, great. Now we know what I like that character. I love Julia Roberts. I do not like that haircut. The you one can with assume George Clooney, that movie. Okay, that came out like 90 years ago. No, 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 no. The no, no, a now. new one. A new one. Yeah, there's a new one they're doing. Is George Clooney in it? Yeah, he's like one of the guys. That he talks on the financial, the business channel. And there's a guy that comes in with a bomb and he has a gun. Oh, oh God! Yeah, that one looks really good. I don't yeah, know the Dominic name of it either. West and a few it's people. really I, good. I've only seen the poster. I have no awesome. idea. Oh, it's super cool. He would be in it. Listen, guys, okay. a transformation. She had Pretty Woman. She wore the wig with a bob, and then she got nice. Took the wig off. Revealed her true colors. <laughs> I'll send the graph to your people. Please do. Okay, great. Please send it to someone with, like, photo. I'm going to have pins along the wall with, like, string. Yes. And I'm going to do it, like, in the movies. It Almost like, like a serial Dumber. killer wall. But uh, it will just be about, like, tracking bobs. Yeah, perfect. Where bobs, they are. Bob tracking. Where they go. It will, too. <laughs> <laughs> so follow our progress on Twitter for that. People are going <laughs> crazy actually about Justina on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Devil with the Bob, they're saying. I so like that, it. Oh my god, I love that. Right? <laughs> but Kelly giving her speech, it wasn't just like hinting at Justina lying. It was directly like, implicating her, and we learned that she's doing this for profit. Yes, she duh. Man, from the beginning, we knew we couldn't trust her. Yeah. And I said that, and then I tried to like her, but I was right from the first time. I've never liked her. Don't play I me, girl. I wanted to trust her, though. <laughs> I know you did. Yeah, for but somebody who knows about the Bob, you wanted to yeah. like her so badly. Okay. But she came through like so. I'm like, wait, what are you? You're doing way too much, and why are you trying to be the administrator of my Foster's app? It was she's worse than I ever thought. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> and then wow. for her now to be. I can't just talk to you when you make faces like that. <laughs> this is my serious face. <laughs> Me. Jeffrey is serious. <laughs> Guys, very serious. I'm serious. I'm very serious. This is a serious show. Yeah, it's a family is. drama. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but for her to be coming at Callie now, which led to the quote unquote slander, saying that mm -hmm. she'd slept with Brandon, and then Callie's big reveal, I was not expecting her to come out with th the news. No, mm -hmm. me neither. That was. Well, because now it's getting so serious, and we saw how, you know, riled up Steph got to want to sue them, and they sure, they were sure they had a case, which they would have had they not slept together. Yeah. But because yes. they slept together, she's like, no, like, you really need to stop, and we can't talk about this anymore, because then it's going to come out that we really did sleep with each other. I do not. What do we Sorry, think Steph's know. reaction is going to be to find out this news? Well,. They're Actually, somebody just her. tweeted that they, uh, Lizette Escobar tweeted that she wished Lizette. Steph would have punched her when Callie grabbed her arm. Right? A few people are really pissed about her grabbing Callie's arm. Oh, yeah, good. I 100% so agree. I loved it when Terry did that. And she, get she away from like, get our up. daughter. Yes. Yeah. Every time That's that she daughter. refers to Callie or Drew, Drew, Drew. Uh, every time she refers to Callie or Jude as my son or my daughter, it just oh, I like yeah. stand up and cheer, and then I have to rewind and see what I missed because exactly. I was like yelling. I know because she yeah. owns it. She really owns it, and that's uh, again, I, all y'all know. I'm obsessed with the dynamics of the family, and I just want to mm. see them uber close. And it's just nice to see her do that. Like when she, I know the way she grabbed her hand because you didn't have to see Terry Polo's face or anything. Literally, her fist was like, "That's enough acting for me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she and I'm done. I'm leaving. I'm, that's a wrap. We're done. <laughs> <laughs>
It's, we got it. We got it. It's amazing. <laughs> That's it. all we need is the arm. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Exactly. They don't. They pay her good money for a reason. Hey, for, for the arm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I. So Justina did come out and she, you know, made like a press al- press release, basically saying, you know, that Kelly Brand slept together. She posted it all over this, you know, this foster what? kid. Uh, the foster app. and found, which with the proof. Yeah. From the restraining order. Exactly. So is she done? Wait. Like, do you think that she's like, okay, I, I've made my point, I'm leaving? Like, she ruined all of this money I could have made by making this bill not mm-hmm. get passed. She completely humiliated me in front of all of these people, and all these reporters are questioning me. I'm just going to put out this restraining order and then leave? I think This is that. what he does. Wait, did I hate you so but, much? But here's the thing. This time, like, I do this every time. I but know, this time, but I don't why, know either. Why are you making this thing hard? Why are you this time? Like, I don't know either. I'm like, I don't know. Okay, it's a 40-year-old <laughs> against a 10-year-old. Callie being the 10-year-old in the metaphor. Right. It, okay, okay, 17 or 18. You do this one thing to attack her when you're angry, but to keep up that anger for, like, a month and continuously yeah. attack her, like, mm-hmm. that well, can't also, happen. Well, also, like, Justina's a grown woman. Like, how many grown women are going to sit there and really <clears throat> fester over some child's actions you know mm-hmm. they're gonna be really petty and miserable sure and, and she's just trying to get paid yeah you saw him, but that chick was fat because, like that's yeah well okay it's leander and i both want to know how does justina actually know that she slept with brandon like she knows that she slept with the foster brother but it was never clarified to justina that it was brandon and in that report, it never says that she slept with her brother. It just says that they had relations. It was, but it was just allegations because when both Steph and Lena put the restraining order on Brandon, meaning something had happened, they don't have to know it happened. They can just throw it out there. But and make how it start does Justina something. know? Is she just like taking a shot She's in the dark? Assuming. Public records. Okay. Yeah. Also, it's Leander. That same uh, user person was like, Tom is so fine. So I just want to give you a little shout out. Tom is there I love how we're talking so much. Like I always come here and never shut up when I'm on the podcast because I just love talking in general. I know. We love it. But I, and, and I'm sitting here next to Tom, and I'm like, you're here, too? Yeah. <laughs> One person actually here? did say, talk, bro. Yeah, talk, bro. <laughs> Tom's like, I'm chilling. It's okay. No, you're good. What do you want me to say, bro? Tom's listening, listening to, in. To go back to our previous discussion about Jude calling Callie a liar, we did have that scene with Brandon and Callie, and she was crying on his shoulder and said, there's just so many lies. Yes, exactly. She oh. And you know what? She has lied a lot. But, and like you said, it's to kind of put things at an even keel, so it's not necessarily like yeah, but to be a liar. The, lying, I feel like connotes hates like such like like purposeful mm-hmm. like lying and like hatred and vitriol. Whereas like she's doing it to cover up and like the lies about Brandon she did to be adopted into mm-hmm. this amazing family. Like I can't blame her for that. You can't, but it's getting to the point where you know I was just watching Fuller House the other day, and DJ Tanner or DJ Fuller says to her kids, "Be careful, you know, lying o- always like." Con- you and that's the thing that's happening to her it's just it, it's too much once there's too many yeah. lies they overlap each other and then you can't live peacefully like that's why people say honesty is the best policy she just needs to get everything like off her chest so that she can actually start new well she did no the, she tried to Brandon. no she tried to start new thinking the adoption was going to be everything but it, it wasn't going to be new unless she had said oh. I want you to adopt me but I need you guys to know that Brandon and I slept together yeah but I'm saying this episode she confessed that right. her and Brandon slept together and that was one of the biggest secrets and I feel like yeah, they could, she could only go up from here. Do we remember where she left off with AJ? Yeah, the last time uh, was in the house when he caught her and Brandon. Oh, remember? was it your decision to say yeah. no more? Well, I just walked away. I don't think it was talked about. Yeah. He uh, just noticed. He's like, that's not, he's not no. cool. Like the way they looked at each other, like obviously something's going down. I'm not trying to be about it. Oh my God. Good for you, AJ. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh god and then AJ is still staying with Mike or did I make that up yeah he's such a good dad he, is. he really is when he was talking to Brandon about Courtney who, aka the devil uh, <laughs> and he was just like, like Courtney oh that's lightly that's putting it really lightly oh, wow. what happened? he hates Courtney I know what about happened this. season about 3 this. happened <laughs> oh god how much time do we have uh, <laughs> I just I, I just don't think that she I think she's like a one percent match for Brandon on OK Cupid and he's like going for it anyways. On um, OK Cupid, I just I she she has a kid. She's older than him. At the time they started dating, it was actually illegal because he was mm-hmm. she was twenty one or two. He was seventeen. He was seventeen. Yeah, yeah, she's twenty one. Yeah, I liked how t- this episode he was like, "Moms, I'm 18," and I was like, "Exactly, 18." Like just all today. the time, <laughs> yeah, like just this today. hour, yeah. he just turned 18. 
<laughs> yeah, I was. N- uh, and then do you notice that when it became legal, they slept together? Oh my oh. god, I didn't even piece it together. Me neither. That's so corny. Get out. Blame on us. I'm actually bummed we didn't. Because you even hit me and we're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we were about it, but we forgot yeah, why. Yeah, the little engine that could. <laughs> yeah, that cracked me up. I couldn't handle it. <laughs> Shut up. We don't know about that yet. <laughs> no comment. I <laughs> know. No comment. Uh, and then Eddie throwing her out. Man, that was a hot mess. <laughs> How embarrassing, too. <gasps> Don't come up in my room like that. Oh my god. That was really intense. But wait, so was she living with her? She was husband? living with her baby daddy, but they were married and then they separated, but they still had to live there because of the kid and just like, you know, complicated Things were not relationships. Great. Um, speaking of having kids. Sorry. We had Daphne who plays Daphne on the show. <laughs> and we are looking for a father for Tasha. And we are wondering, like, what your thoughts are regarding AJ, Daphne, Tasha, family. I agree with this. Daphne's been after that for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 not Daphne on the show, though. We know that. The way Daphne, you said Daphne's Daphne. been after Daphne. that since the, the cookout, since the moon uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was there for that, too. If, <laughs> if, if, if it's meant to be, it shall be. How yeah. successful okay. is she, she going to be? On that note, do you, like, do you want, how do you feel about AJ's character? Do you think that they're going to extend the storyline, that we're going to see you next season? I'm so curious uh, as to where that storyline <clears throat> is going to go. I have no idea. Right, because um, they I, left it open ended. Like they you left can't it stay. Very open ended. He's seventeen. I mean, the three older children in the house, including two, three, including him, only have about one more year in the house technically, mm-hmm. being in the foster system. So it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I have no idea. Hmm. Knowing, and <laughs> I feel like this is so serious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Knowing how devoted people are to Brally. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts about potentially not allowing that to happen because of AJ and Kelly? Answer I wa- correct. I, I want to prevent it. I want to prevent Bradley. What? <laughs> yeah, because he wants him and I, Kelly I to be together. Prevent Bradley. Because no. you want a job. You are a big <laughs> Twitter <laughs> on honest. a great show. Let's, yeah. let's be real. No, let's seriously. See, who I mean, wouldn't let's want see to? see how interesting the story can get. And I mean, they're, well, they're I- brother and sister now. I keep doing this like this. Like, your hair. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just so fat. <laughs> Um, oh my god! I, I that's why I want like the Daphne AJ spinoff, Ray and Tasha <laughs> together. That would be a hit. That would. Be that a would hit. be a hit. We gotta pitch this to free form. The behind the scenes guys. I could see it. I could see Let like you know, like you. AJ. Can you take care of my friend Daphne? Something happened real quick, and you had to go see her, and then mm-hmm. you, y'all keep like start talking, and then oh, it's and like, then like, and then Daphne's like feminism just comes out all the way, and you're like, what? oh, and Daphne comes home, and like She's AJ's like, like pushing her on a swing, pushing Daphne Tasha on a swing, and Daphne's like. One? Like dinner or mm-hmm. something? Like all cook. And then we can <laughs> do like crossovers where you'll have the Fosters on uh, Daphne and AJ. Yeah. And then Tia yeah, Callie. The and, yeah. and, and Auntie Callie. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to text uh, Bradley right now. <laughs> this is a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, can you text? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so sp- I don't think we have anything else to say about Brandon and Courtney. Do you guys? I um, hate her. That's it. Everybody hates her. Like, oh literally, my everybody God. hates her. Everyone She's hates cute. Courtney. Yeah, oh, I like wow. her, but it's just it is a lot. I think we're just exhausted <laughs> Wait, to think about that. Did you say that. I like her butt, or did you say I like her butt? <laughs> but I like her butt. I like her butt. Kaba. Yeah, has a great body. We've been saying it from the beginning when she like did the surfing thing. Guys, I misspoke. We have to mention the house, apartment, the lease mm-hmm. that Brandon spent his money on. That's what I said. On. It's too much. That's why I don't like her because I hate when guys try to take care of a female by throwing their money out there. And it's like, don't do that. That's what makes you attractive when you right. can hold yourself down. But you don't have to... Well, uh, here's a more concrete reason that I hate Courtney. Huh? Her What? He's not spending that $7,500 all Yeah, time. on first and, and last, last month's rent. Yeah. Because Where he thinks... Where is she living? <laughs> no, she was staying with she was staying with uh, Mason with her baby dad with Eddie her baby. I know, but this is for the new place. It looks like yeah, it was like a house and, and last month's rent. But it's a house. But is that all together or is that? It's a lot of money. That's a great. That question. is a lot of money. <laughs> it's, it's San Diego. San Diego. San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. They're probably in La Jolla. Who knows. Okay, uh, <laughs> well, I do not. I just like Courtney because she her first response. She should have responded and said, "Thank you," but you, I cannot accept this. Yeah, she shouldn't have accepted. That was it, the no matter only pro yes. response. Yeah, not like OMG. Like, are you gonna live here too and like babysit my kid on bartending? That's disgusting. No, I mean it's not That's disgusting, good. but it's just like, come on. I but will I don't know, not but accept. She's, she's cute, and I don't hate the idea. My only problem <laughs> with it is just Callie. I want Callie. 
Oh, really? Love people. Let like, Brandon love. I know. The way people are so mad about this cracks me up. I'm, like, having such a hard time participating in the conversation because the way people are getting so mad. Tell us one. Don't, well, y'all can't lie, though. Courtney's El- cute. She's pretty. Alicia Bradley just said, she's sweet, but she's in the way, so no. <laughs> okay, you know what? Better explain Wasn't than I could do name, myself. Her name is Alicia Bradley, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> is that her real name? How do you feel about AJ Alicia Bradley? <laughs> That's what, what I want to know. Do you want me to scroll back down? Because they had feels about AJ yeah, and Brad. No, no, like, I want to know at least. Brandon Brad. has a hero <laughs> complex. Brandon wants to save the world. Wait, CJ Houston does say not everyone hates Courtney, but you also put a U in Courtney, so if you know that there's no U, you may not like Courtney either. Oh, she what? doesn't have a U in her name? She's Courtney without a U. Oh, uh, she sucks. Yeah, it's, it's like, like Courtney with the sucks. Her E-Y. mother sabotaged her. What mother yeah. would do that to your t- daughter? I know. Spell she, it correctly. Yeah. Duh. She, like, cursed her forever. It's not unique. She's like the evil stepmother. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie. No U for you! Steph on the show? <laughs> Steph on the show? It's with an F. What are you doing? <laughs> It's Steph with an F. Leave yeah. Mama Bear alone. What are you doing? I love Mama, Mama Bear, but what you doing with that F in there? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, what? Bradley Fields says that Brandon needs therapy more than he needs Courtney. I support that. <laughs> he could use that money for bit. good counseling. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but He's instead, about to go to New York. <laughs> okay, I want to bring the, I want to bring mm. the mood down a bit. Okay. okay. We have to discuss Nick. Mm. Okay. So Nick gets the letter. <sighs> In order to try to win over Mariana, he buys her this necklace. But well, I don't think it was right of him to snoop either. He was curious about the letter, so he went over to look at it. I don't think it was his place to do that. Oh, God. Of course not. So he, he did start off bad. The necklace was sweet, but another appropriate reaction would have been... Telling the truth. Thank you, but I cannot accept this. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> because she's about Matt. Like, if that's why Brandon said... You felt horrible about what happened with, between you and Matt. So if you do this, it's gonna be the same thing. I thought that Mariana had learned her lesson. At that moment, I would have been like, no, because I'm not feeling you right now. Like I have to be honest. I can't accept this necklace. I'm not about but you. But if you want to give us the warehouse, still, I'd appreciate it. But she didn't feel that way. They end up not getting back together. But that's just because she she's going off of her emotion. She felt so guilty before what happened between her and Matt. That now this poor young girl's like, now I have to be nice to everybody. Okay. Exactly. So she's all over the place. Yeah. She just wants to be a good person. We, she doesn't know that she could just do it. That she can just be like, "Sorry, peace out." Yeah. Okay. Um, it's not to cut you off, but we are just like running behind on time, <laughs> and we have to get to. He burns the theater down, but more importantly, the gun. Yeah. Do we think they're going there? I blame oh his father. God. Uh, well, I talked to Jillian before this, and she said that everything spirals out from his horrible father. Right, of course. Duh. It's yeah. not great. Did you see how... But camera, she, can you shoot the guest, please? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but Jillian had a good I don't point want that Nick... flagged on YouTube. Never mind, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nick is sensitive and caring, as Jillian pointed out, too. I, do True. we like How much of like the gun violence in schools do we think they're going to address? I, uh, I hope not. No, not I, right now. Like, it, like I understand shows addressing the school violence and shootings and all that, and I totally support it, and I get it. But there's already so much going on the show right now. I yeah. don't want to bring that into the mix of it. If there is going to be a gun thing, I fear then that it will be something solely to do with Nick, and I don't like that either. But it could yeah. even be that like the school will find it in his glove compartment. You know? Well, yeah. I don't know, but it's. I feel like it's already. I'm just gonna show you. Watching their reactions because they know. I know. Because then, what? I was just wondering. Do you think that like what? He has the gun. He's outside of school, and then we see him in the car. He kind of, you know, he looks like he's, you know, almost like he's got this mindset that he's going to do something. Mm-hmm. Right. What is that? I don't want to like because it's like you said right, because for you me don't it's either want it to be a school either, shooting. I don't, I, but he could be like he could either shoot himself right where he wants the attention right or a school shooting. I don't want. I just don't those. see. I don't know why what he do you, would want to hurt other people. Right, for. Well, unless it was. I could see like him killing that. Him. I think he could. I could who, see him. You know, he'd, he'd be like revenge almost. Like right, but, be out uh, of hatred. I know. For I thought that too. But, but we also don't know like the inner workings of his psyche. He could right. be like a you know dep- like depressed depressed. Mm-hmm. He yeah. could be an actually a homicidal person. We don't know. Right. The only reason why I'm worried about it is because his father said to him himself, like, it's not about like what about him and Sierra or him and uh, Mariana that she's not about you. So he mentioned it. Don't think anything of it. It was just for the warehouse. The fact yeah. that his father, who he hates and resents, says something and then for it to be true just moments later yeah. is what I think either one, he's going to be like, oh yeah, dad. That's a great point. He, mm. 
But why would, like, okay, which is stupid, but, like, why would he go to school? If he was going to harm himself, why would he go to school to do it? Right. So I For the attention. That's a lot of people who were suicidal. I mean, a lot of times it is because they're sad and they have their, you know, depressive issues. Yeah. But a lot of people are desperately seek attention. What if he's going to kill his daddy? Because his daddy ain't there. Yeah, but we all turn around. Oh, I mean, it could be, like, just a hostage situation, as someone on Twitter was saying. Like, we don't know. I have no idea what to expect. Last thing we need to discuss for tonight is the Sally Benson situation. That got wrapped up for Monty. She's off the hook. But we have the new person on the hook being Lena, possibly in trouble for getting a sex offender. Um, involved with the play. Not great. <laughs> I think, unfortunately, that could be a fireable offense. Yeah. That's ridiculous. If I went to Anchor Beach, I would jump south. R- ridiculous from Aaron because we know all of the facts. I was going to say, know? but I think I'm hoping that <laughs> all of the issues with Gabe, they're just going to go ahead and and back up and address the issue of him even having that on his record and get that taken off yes. and then go back and address the issues that are around that. And that's my big question. We were trying to get it off his record. How much will that help? Yeah. And they, yet, it's we. The, the school board doesn't know that and they can't, right now, it is illegal and they can't like give her the free pass mm-hmm. even if she like believes in her heart that it's fine. It, well, yeah, well, what sucks is now it's, the difference is that with Sally and Monty's situation, that's all word and speculation with Lena, that's, yeah. you know, facts. It's and I feel ex- so it's bad that it was Noah who like was the catalyst for I all know. this. Do you think that Jesus should stay out of it? I mean, I, he should. I don't blame him for doing what he's yeah. doing because he's, you know, he's at the age where a man is looking, is seeking for, like, manly things and role models and stuff like that. Like, he just wants his dad around. He doesn't have that with Lena and stuff. And so, I, like, I don't blame him. And he has good intentions. He literally was just trying to call, like, look. Yeah. I'm sure he wasn't saying, like, well, he was around all these kids. He was like, no. He was. He knew his rules. He was trying just to help us. No, you're you know? right. I just, yeah. just scrambling. So to speak. What? So to speak, you got something to say? Oh, yeah, well, don't, I, don't worry, I've been talking a lot. Um, <laughs> I, was, I just think it's interesting that he has, like, like he could go to Mike, you know, if he really wanted a father figure. Like, it might not be the same thing, but it's someone yeah. close who could be almost like, you know, uh, like an uncle or someone mm-hmm. who's there. Gabe says he doesn't want anything to do with him. Yeah. It's just all very interesting that Jesus is still so, like, prominent. Like, even if, you know, even if it's not... A relationship between him and his father that he's looking for. I think it's cool that he's still trying to help him. Yeah. He just wants him to be happy. He says that you made a mistake, but you sh- you shouldn't have to live with this for your the rest of your life. Right. You're right. He's just trying to be helpful. We're almost out of time, but speaking of being helpful, can you tell us a bit about Hayden's hope totes? Yeah, I would love to. We're all wearing our bracelets. We're all bracelets. Um, Hayden's Hope Totes is actually... I, so I remember I talked about this last time with you guys when I was here. I this remember. time, it's actually like up and running. People can donate to it now. We have a website, which is um, www.haydenshopetotes.org. Um, we have an app that you guys can download. Uh, there's a, an Fost entire and store. Found. <laughs> it is not <laughs> Fost and Found, but that was that, that's a good name. We should have take, taken that. Took something You're good. but uh, <laughs> there was a uh, yeah right, was right. That, we'll do a twitter poll yeah so we'll, i'll figure it out take it for um <laughs> and there's a there's an entire shop where there's tons of different merchandise we have so much stuff i go in there every day and i feel like there's new stuff um we have some of the most incredible and hardworking people that are working on this but hey so this is finally up we've been working with um the dcfs of los angeles and we're trying to continuously raise money every month to try and provide these bags for these kids which has been a challenge in itself. I mean, trying to get... It's about... Just in the small area that we're doing, it's about 700 kids a month wow. that get put into the foster care system. Oh, that's amazing. And this is, this is like, a small part of Los Angeles. Yeah. And then when you think about, like, California and then the country and then you think of all these different continents, there are so many kids being put into the system every day. Mm-hmm. And so it, just trying to provide these bags for these kids is something that, you know, is is so important and essential to them. Yeah, and what's inside? Simple. Just like the essentials, like toothbrush and it's stuff? It's just a fact. It's just theirs. It's simple. Um, hopefully, you know, as time goes on, it's it's always more goals to strive for. Maybe someday... Oh, we'll right have... now it's the bag. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Because yeah. you had mentioned that before, bag. a lot of times these kids go from place to place and they don't have just something to put their things they in, They have right? a trash bag. Exactly. Or a pillowcase. So or a nothing. nice tote to just carry your personal belongings. And it's yours forever. No yeah. one can take this from you. It's something that you carry with you th- for the rest of your life. That's and a lot a month. It's a lot. Oh my it's God. And what is the website people can go to to see more about uh, it? It's www.haydenshopetotes.org. Cool. No, no apostrophe. 
<laughs> Hayden's hope totes. No, just Hayden's <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, all together. That's awesome. Um, yeah. thank you so much for being here, guys. Thank you. Guys this was so much fun. Those. Yeah, where can everybody find you online? Until next time. I'm uh, at Hayden Byerly and at Byerly11 on Instagram and Twitter. Awesome, Tom. And Instagram, I'm at T S Williamson. I I believe I think that's my email. I think I'm T S Williamson. <laughs> and uh, Twitter, I think it's uh, T Williamson. I think he talks more on those things than he does here tonight. So. <laughs> oh, shade, Stay shade. Tuned. What about you, it's Hannah? It's okay. It was our fault. We could have asked more questions. You all can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at the Hotshot Dude. And you can find me on Twitter at Stephanie Georgie, on Instagram at the Stephanie Georgie, and for the American Crime Story, The People vs. O.J. Simpson after this. Awesome. And I tweet from Jeff Masters 1, and Jillian tweets from at Jillian Left. We'll see you next season, guys. Thank Goodbye. You. Thank you. Yeah. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Bye. Bye. See you later. See you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.